All right, so welcome to the redo of the coding part of the first session. So today we're going to start with Stata first. Yeah. Now the data is already in the memory, so let's do our first command. First, let's set the time series variable to be the year. Now, next we're going to we're going to perform multiple imputation. Now, what is multiple imputation? Well, your data set has missing values for some variables. So it'll be helpful to, to, interpolate, to interpolate them. Now, multiple imputation works. Multiple imputation interpolates the missing values by performing regressions to, to find the missing values. So here we set the missing values to be the dependent variable. I'm sorry, we set the dependent variable, sorry. We set the missing values as the dependent variable using the other, var the other variables as the independent variables. So in Stata, what we do first is we set the, da we set the data set to be a wide data set. Though it's been a long time since I've encountered a long data set. I don't think, I don't think we'll have to, um, to set any data sets as long. Now, next we register which variables are to be imputed. So in this case, it's inflation and VIC. Now, finally, we perform the imputation itself. Now in Stata, how it works is we have the, we have the variables VIC and inflation to be a function of the other variables as the regressors. So the command works is you call on the MI package you, you ask the package to impute these variables and you tell the package to make it a chain imputation, which means both variables will be imputed simultaneously. And we, we use the regress option to, to, call the, to tell the command that it will be imputed by regression. Now, in our options, we list 20 imputations, meaning um, it, meaning it will it will draw 20 sets of missing values. Now, imputation, how imputation is actually drawing random lots of values from the regression, which means depending on the, the proportion of missing, of missing values to present values, more imputations would be good. So in this case, we can, we're doing 20, although it really depends on how much missing information there is. Now, we also add the augment option, or yeah, we add the augment option in order to augment the, the imputation. Now, running the command, we get, now running the command, we finally get these new variables on the right-hand side, underscore 20 inflation and underscore 20 Vic, like so. Now, next thing we do is we perform the Dickey Fuller tests. So Vic, like Vic, US bill, <clears throat> T bills, fair exchange and inflation. Now, as we can see from the results, um, most of them are actually non-stationary. So we'll have to generate the first difference variables. Now, performing the Dickey Fuller test again, we can see that all the variables, all the variables have become stationary. Now, before we continue, we need to, we need to unset the data as the, from from imputation because a stat is very picky that way. Now we take the information criterion for the la for which lag to use. Um, wait. wait, this might this command might take a while. Um, Mm. 
wait, the, uh, the varsal command really takes this long to work. <laughs> Mm. Ah, there. And uh, ah, there. All right. Now we have we have two information criterion of interest. There's AIC and oh, wait, sorry. There's AIC and there's the BIC. You would want to use the AIC if your if your um if your goal is to minimize the the uh, the log square the log the square error. And you, you would want to use the BIC if your focus is on finding on finding causality. Though in this case, mo they both agree that nine lags is the optimal number of lags to use. Now, setting the lags to nine, we perform the Johans integration test. Oh, linearity. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm, whatever. Please rank. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> Major shot symmetric. Oh, well, we can skip this. Now, after you the UN co integration test, we set the the A and B matrices for the structural vector autoregression. Now, now for the for matrix A, we set this matrix to be a lower triangular matrix. Not upper triangular, as I mistakenly said last time, but lower triangular here, with the with the lower sorry, the low with the part of the matrix under diagonal to be and to be empty for the estimation. So we set it like like so. Now for the B matrix, we set the primary diagonal to be empty for the B model. So can uh, one question? Yes. So the B matrix we are leaving uh, those dot is is like a free parameter which we are going to estimate also. Yes. My question: A matrices is a restriction on contemporaneous relationship. Yes. Is B matrices on the lag or that is what is I, it's not yet clear also to me. Oh, well, a the A matrix is restrictions on on the on the relations between the endogenous variables. For the B matrix, um, the B the sorry, the restrictions are normalized to an identity matrix, which is why. Why we leave, we leave the primary diagonal empty to normalize them to the identity matrix. Yeah, but my question is, it is on which kind of relationship? Because A is more on, as you said, on, on endogenous, but, but like more contemporaneous. Oh, oh like, okay. Yeah. They're both contemporaneous. Both of them. Though the, the difference is the B matrix is normalized. Okay. Okay, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I look into it again. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, now, I accidentally pressed some. Wait. I accidentally uh, mispressed, but whatever. Here we have the, the AB model estimation. So. Although I actually I accidentally get it with four lags, but whatever you can always change it afterwards. This is the command to perform an S var A B model. So S, so S var then the variables of inter the endogenous variables of interest, then the lags as options, then set A E Q, set A one the A matrix to be the A E Q. A E Q is the, the option to set for setting the A matrix. BEQ, meanwhile, is the option to set the B matrix. Then we set the exogenous variables US builds and VIC. Now, here we perform the S bar for the, for the A model. We drop the BEQ option and left in the AEQ option.
Now here, oh, sorry, my apologies. Um, <clears throat> here we've, we've performed the SVAR for the B model. Now, instead of the AEQ option, we've set the BEQ option with B1 as the B matrix. Now, let's try one command first. Now, in Stata, trying to perform a Bayesian SVAR leads to this error because Stata hasn't officially supported Bayesian VARs and SVARs yet. Now, on that note, we now switch to R. Uh, can I ask a few questions? Yes, sure. Um, about two theory questions. Sure, sure, sure. The first one, yes. I have seen how you included exogenous variable. If I want to see the coefficient of those exogenous variable from the output. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, coefficients, well, to see the coefficients, you need to perform a normal VAR first, one sec. Here. So it will bring the same coefficient. Come again. The normal VAR and the, rest, uh, the, the structural VAR bring the same coefficient for those exogenous. Ah, yes, because what the structural VAR command does is it, it estimates the restrictions. But otherwise, the coefficients are the same. Okay, the same. Yes. Uh, and number two, is the interpretation of the coefficient on structural var or var generally the same with the normal, like OLS regression yeah, and all that? Yeah, generally they're the same. It's just they're that, the same. Yes, it's just that on, in the S var we have additional restrictions to place on the error term. Okay. Yes. Then my final question. Yes. Do you, do you mind performing a kind of impulse response on stata for SVAR? The one who have estimated. Impulse response? Oh, sure. Wait, let me just try to remember the command. Mm -hmm. Impulse response. That is. Was it IRF? Oh, wait, let me see. No, that's not. Um, if, wait. Impulse response that is. That's weird. Um, oh, wait, yeah. All right, forgot. What, what are, did you do? Um, I, did, I, used, I used the IRF command. IRF. Okay, then at first it was not bringing the graph. What did you do to bring it? Yeah, I, it was minimized when, when, it, when it was brought up. Okay. Yeah, so what you do is first you perform the estimation, then you type hmm. IRF. Okay. So we have our impulse responses here. Okay. All right, wait. let me try it for the 